Hello everyone. Hi. Here we are. In case you don't know me, my name is Linda, Linda Dolkey, and I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia. And tonight is our Sunday night little community fun night. So this is one of the nights that I go live to share my crafty stuff with you. Um, and I do a Friday night live and a Sunday night live and we make stuff together. So um, if you're stumbling across this email, this uh, sorry, this video for the very first time, um, then hopefully that explains what we're all doing here. Um, I have the most wonderful, wonderful group of um, people who watch and comment and um, sometimes maybe craft along as well. Speaking of craft alongs, we had a craft along session yesterday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and that was a lot of fun. And I know quite a few of you who are here tonight. I'm just reading back through the comments. Um, I know quite a few who were here tonight were here yesterday as well. So, ah, oh, I know, I know. It's cool, isn't it, Margaret? I've got my I've got my hoodie on tonight. This is actually one of my Stampin' Up! hoodies. I know. Can you see my Stampin' Up! on the side? I bought this one. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> I bought this one um, way back in 2013 on one of our trips when we got to go to um, the, the convention, Stampin' Up! convention in Salt Lake City. And there was some, it was crazy. It was something like 7,000 stampers at this conference. Absolutely mind-blowing, amazing. But um, I'm, not a, I'm not great with crowds. And so it was a little bit overwhelming for me, but it was truly an experience. And I just sort of dipped in and dipped out. Whenever I, it got too overwhelming and too much for me, I'd go out and have a coffee um and uh and managed to get through it that way <laughs> but it was a lot of fun i'm really glad i went okay you're the only one talking where is everyone no they're all here <laughs> ah that's good i'm glad you're enjoying the craft alongs thank you so much this is the car where is it uh this is what we made yesterday in the craft along this this little um gift card holder Okay, and it's made out of envelopes, um, which I think is a lot of fun. Okay, and that's what it looks like. It's kind of concertinaed. And then there's a little pocket in here. I haven't put my, oh, yeah, I have. I've got my little open sign there where you would put a gift card holder in that little pocket there. So that's the one we made yesterday, and um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Did everyone have a go? Oh, you enjoyed that, Donna? That's great. That's awesome. Uh, da, 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 going through comments I see Donna and Margaret were having a good old chat hey Kelly yep that's two lives in a row and thanks for subscribing to the newsletter today I, I saw that come through and went yay um, if you are not subscribed to my newsletter list please do that um, there's two things to subscribe to one is if you're on YouTube hit the red subscribe button and that way you're notified whenever I go live or if I'm posting a new video or about a new technique or something like that um, and that's what I love to do I love to do techniques techniques are kind of my thing um, and the other thing to subscribe to is the newsletter. So what you do is you go over to my blog, and I'm just going to give you the address for that right now. Where is it? There it is. Um, on the bottom of the screen right there, lhiggins.blogspot.com. Over on the top right-hand corner of the blog, especially if you're logging in with a laptop, it is easier. Um, when you um, go in there, top right-hand corner, just below the main banner, is a sign-up form for the newsletter. Okay, And that's how you'll be notified of what's coming up. Um, any specials that are on, um, some new ideas and tips. I post lots of fun stuff in there. Um, and I've got a few things coming out in the new the, in the next newsletter, which will be out before Christmas. So um, if you'd like to receive one, make sure you're subscribed to that newsletter. So they're the two things. The other thing is um, this address, I'll pop it up again later, but the web address, um, the blog address, is also where you'll be going if you're wishing to purchase any of the tutorials from yesterday's craft along. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. Um, I'll show you those cards again for anyone who'd like to see them again. Okay, let's go back to comments. I see who else is chatting tonight. That's a long time to card make, Donna. I've I've been doing it just a little bit longer than I was really a scrapbooker before I found Stampin' Up. I just started my foray into cards before stamp before I went to my first Stampin' Up workshop. And um, what I had always found, the reason that I, I loved it straight away was because obviously, number one, the products were really awesome quality. But the second thing and the thing that really grabbed me was that everything coordinated. And I love coordination especially colour coordination. 
And when I was a scrapbooker before Stampin' Up, what I would do is I would I would find a photo I wanted to scrapbook. I'd find maybe a colour, I'd go to a scrapbook shop and I would find, um, and there's not many of those around these days, most of um, the supplies for scrapbooking you would normally get online. There's not too many scrapbook shops left. But um, I would go to a scrapbook shop and I would find the right colour paper and then I'd have to try and find a designer series paper to go with it and, you know, and all the embellishments and other bits and pieces trying to get everything to match was such a pain. You could, I mean, I loved going to the shop but... I could spend hours there trying to get everything to coordinate and then I found Stampin' Up! and it was so easy because everything coordinated. You know, you had, if you had it in an ink, it also came in cardstock. It also came, in, there was elements of it in the designer series paper, the same colour. Ribbon matched. Everything matched and it just, it just made life so easy. And that was really how I got started. I went to my first workshop. I bought one thing, I bought a stamp and scrub and a mist because I was also eyeing off the kit right from that very first word go. I'm thinking that looks like a really great way to go. I'll get a discount. Maybe I'll even be able to support my scrapbooking habit. And I kind of went into it thinking that it might support my scrapbooking habit. And here we are 16 years later and it's my job. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? So that's if you haven't heard that before, that's my little, the very, very brief version of my story. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces in there, but um, could anybody else find that? What was? Why did you start um, getting involved with Stampin' Up? Was it because of the coordination, like me, or the products? Did you love the community? Did you? What was it about it that grabbed you? If you could just, you know, in one sentence, say what it was that grabbed you, I'd love to see that in the comments because everyone's got a different story, and we're all here for different reasons. I think I came for the products. I stayed for the community. I stayed for the people. Um, because once I started to get to know other crafters who love what I love, I realized that we really are, <laughs> really are connected and, um, and I want to stay connected. So, um, it has become such an important part of my life because I've met all these amazing people who have formed part of my community. So I'm just looking through comments now. <sighs> You've only used Stampin' Up! for a year, Kelly. Ah, see, hopefully, hopefully we can inspire you here and you'll find lots of things that you want to do with it because there are so many things. Do you know I've been running technique classes for probably, I don't know, at least 12 years, maybe maybe more like 14 or 15. Um, and I, even now, every now and then, sometimes I go back to old, trusted, and you know, familiar techniques, but I still find... I'm still coming up with new techniques or I'm finding new techniques out there in the internet world and I get excited about them and want to show them to, to my customers. So so that's kind of cool. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it yesterday, Susan. Thank you so much. That's great. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, when it's cold in Sydney, well, I'm not in Sydney. I'm about an hour and a half north of Sydney, um, but it's, it's pretty chilly here today. I've got my jacket on like I was saying earlier. <laughs> I'm so glad you like the class. That's awesome. That's okay, Katrina. That's what replays are for. You can go back and watch them anytime. It doesn't matter if you miss it. That's one of the great things about the internet is you can go back and watch a replay. Ah, do, 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 do. Oh, you had to go on to the desktop view. Yep. And then, uh, oh, okay, so you subscribed on the phone. Okay. Hey, Sol Vega. Nice to see you. Hey, Margaret. Hi, Jenny. We've got lots of people here tonight. Did everyone have a great weekend? How was it? Was it fun? Yeah, the community for you, Anita, that's the best part. The DSP is what attracted Donna. There we go. Um, and, Anita, you said the same reasons as me as well. Um, and then, yeah, well, I think when you scrapbook, it's easy to go into card making because you've got all the same stuff and then you go, well, the thing about scrapbooking, scrapbooking is a bigger investment, emotional investment. Okay, I can sit down with a scrapbook page and it can take me ages to do a scrapbook page. Sometimes I do a quick one, but mostly it, I take a long time about it um, because I'm emotionally invested in the photograph and the emotion of what I want to convey. Whereas a card, I can sit down and do a card in, you know, 20 minutes or half an hour and it's like a little pocket of joy um, that, doesn't you know i can compartmentalize that little bit of card making so i don't know if anyone else feels that way but that's kind of how i feel about it uh let's have a look oh yeah jenny was saying something to do exactly um and i think that's a big thing too you know you, who wants to be bored right the quality and the coordination says Solvega. katarina saying the community 
And it's all these things. Um, Stampin' Up! was very appealing to me, the love card making, and you've met a lot of new friends in the process. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I say. We come for the products and the quality and we stay for the community and all the people that we meet because it's a really lovely thing. Ah, all right. Shall we get started? I think we probably should. I've been chit-chatting chit all night. I'm going to show you a bit of technique tonight. We talked about this the other night. I was deciding which card to do and we ended up going with the other card. And this is the one I didn't do on Friday night. So I'm going to do this tonight. And this is a bit of technique to show you a really fun background technique with watercolour. So I'm going to switch over to the desk. Here we go. Here's my desk view. I'll just um, move this here. Does everyone see that okay? My son hooked up a little a new light for me tonight, so I'm hoping that the, the lighting is maybe a little better. We'll see what happens. Um, so far, so good. <laughs> you needed new inks. The inks are great because you have, I mean, they're water-based, and I find um, you can do so many things. And watercoloring is one of the things. Thanks for that segue there, Kelly. Watercoloring is one of the great things you can do with our inks. Okay. Um, oh, Debbie, that sounds cold. You're in Montana. You know what I think of when I think of Montana, I think of horses and wide open fields and you know cowboys and all that kind of stuff. It's probably nothing like that where you are. I don't know. Maybe it is like that, but you know, like Yellowstone, um, that kind of stuff, <laughs> and um, you know, and beautiful, very, very, very beautiful. So um, that's what I think of when I think of Montana. So I've got all the pieces I need for my card tonight. I've got a piece of this is Coastal Cabana, this color. Oh, that's good, Susan. I'm glad you're here. Um, and then I've got a different – this is this dotty one here is from the um, perfectly penciled paper, um, DSP, which is in our annual catalogue. This one, though, is from the Cottage Gingham paper. And I thought, well, it's retiring, so I really should use it. It's Gingham Cottage, actually, on page 59. Here we go. It's this paper here. This one, as far as I know, last time I checked, I haven't checked today. I did check on Friday night and checked yesterday. It was still available. So, um, and it's marked down. It's really good value. Okay, it was $53. Um, let me double check the price of this for you before I go any further. I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing and get myself in trouble. But the reason that I love this paper is because there's 48 sheets, okay? So it's four times the size of a normal 12 by 12 pack, but it's really good value because it's not four times the price. It's only four times the amount of paper that you get. And it's really great. I love these 48 sheet packs. I'm going to show you a different one tonight. But the, I love the 48 sheet packs. This is 12 by 12 paper, 48 sheets, and you get four of each of 12 different designs. So that's really fantastic if you're a demonstrator because that means you get lots and lots of one, one type of design. So if you're running classes or anything like that, which I do, um, I've got plenty to go around, plenty to give to different people. So I'm just going to go on and I'm going to search for this. Give me one second. I just want to have a look and see what comes up. Okay, it is still available. And it's on sale, okay, it was $53, it is now $21.20 and you get 48 sheets. Oh my goodness, what good value is that? So it's almost the same price as a regular 12 by 12 pack, but it's four times that, but it's almost the same price because a regular pack is $21, this is $21.20, okay, fantastic deal. That I can't even believe that's still there. Now, the Gingham Cottage Sweet Collection, which is all of these things, the Cottage Reefs, the Country Reef Dyes, the, um, the Pearlescent Enamel Effect or Pearlized Enamel Effects, and also the Silver Threaded Twine and the paper, all of that together is $185.75, okay? But at this price, you'd actually be better off not buying the collection. You'd be better off buying some of these, these separately because... Some of these, for example, this paper is marked right down if you buy it as a standalone item. So I think that's a really great way to go. Same with the bundle, okay? The Cottage Wreaths stamp set is $34. That's not on special. But the Country... Oh, hang on. Country Wreath dies. The Country Wreath dies are staying. That's why. These are not retiring, guys. They're staying. And that's why, I mean, the bundle is going, but... Um, but these are not marked down because they're not, they're going to be 
going into a new catalog okay this however is not does that make sense to everybody if you love the paper grab it now such good value i love it when we have good value stuff all right you struggle to use black and white um you know what black and white in my mind goes with pretty much everything and um especially if it's a, like a repeating pattern um like this is you know a repeating pattern and gingham also is a repeating pattern so i find them quite easy to use in a background this way i'm going to grab my um seal and i'm going to start by popping this straight on can everyone see what I'm doing there? Okay, I'm just going to add this. So I have measured, this is a card front size, okay? So it's 10 centimetres wide by 14.3 long. And this little piece here, I believe, is 6 centimetres wide. And the length is 13.8, which is half a centimetre smaller in the length. That means I'm going to get a little bit of a border all the way around. So that's just setting it up, okay? And then I have here a piece of fluid 100 watercolor paper okay this is our watercolor paper that we stock at Stampin' Up and I find this really great okay this is um in my mind I use it quite a bit it's as good as any um heavy duty watercolor paper you might find out there such as Canson papers and so forth for those of you who are familiar with watercoloring and this is really comparable it's a lovely thick and it has low tooth and by that I mean low texture Okay, it's relatively smooth. We used to have uh, watercolour paper that was, um, in, in the past, that was, um, uh, it was had more texture. Okay, it was more like, like a waffled or dimpled surface. Um, this is more smooth but still very um, porous, so it's great for watercolouring. I don't mind a textured watercolour paper because it can give you a different look but it is nice when you're stamping I think it's nice to have a smooth one so I'm going to you because we're going to be adding a color over the background here this I'm going to stamp in stays on now it doesn't matter if we stamp first and then do our background or do our background and then stamp okay I think sometimes it's easier to stamp first because then it can give you a guide as to what colours you might want where. For example, I can see the water is down the bottom, so that's probably where I'm going to want more bluey tones. Um, I've chosen colours here that I thought were very fresh and tropical looking, okay, because I wanted something that looked, you know, like a tropical Hawaiian-y kind of a scene. So I went with Coastal Pamana, which is the same as the background here. Granny Apple Green, which you can see here in the background, and also Bermuda Bay. We probably won't use a lot of Bermuda Bay, but I'm going to put that one on standby and we'll see if we need it. All right. So this is a really simple technique. You're going to need your water painters. Um, you can use just a normal brush, but I love the water painters because they allow me to control exactly where the water goes quite well. Um, and you can use either, you can see these two, they come in a pack of three and you get a fine tip, a, a medium tip, and then a brush tip. Okay, the brush end is thick and like, you know, great for doing a background wash, but I'm just using the two finer ones today. All right, so I'm going to squeeze. Mm, will I stamp it first? Yes, I think I will. All right, before I do that, I'm going to stamp. All right, so I'm going to start with stays on. And the stamp set that I'm using is retiring out of this catalogue. So this is my something old for tonight. We'll get onto something new in a little while. But the Sun Kiss stamp set is right up the back here on page 69. You see it right here. So you've got the palm trees with the little mound and the, and the sea in the background. You've got some little shells. Um, you've got an umbrella and some chairs, a little pelican, and a few nice greetings. The greeting that I really love is the sunny seasons greetings because I think this works so well in the southern southern hemisphere. You know, those of us who, those of you guys who live in the northern hemisphere, you you guys have got all your snow and your snowmen and your snowflakes and all the stuff, but we don't have that. Okay, it's it's hot. Well, you wouldn't think so today, but you normally would expect it to be hot at Christmas time in Australia. So this set is absolutely perfect for us, um, and I do love that. An Uber Eats voucher. Ooh. Oh, if you're wondering how much that set is, it is retiring. It is $39. My understanding is it is not marked down. That's the price is the price. So let me just go back up and see if I've missed any comments. I don't think I have. Um, oh, that's okay, Joan. You can go 
Oh, you did it this afternoon. Yay. That's great. It doesn't matter if you're not there live. It's nice to be live, but if you're not, absolutely fine. And that's what replays are for. So really great. All right. So let's get into this. I've got my, my biggest stamp in here, which is the one with the palm trees. And I'm going to attach this to block E because it's the only block. Oh, you could go block E or block F, but I think block E is this size right here. This is a good this is a good size for this one. I think block F would be a bit big. All right, so I've got that sitting here and I'm going to use stays on. Now stays on is great when you're watercoloring because it is a waterproof ink, which means it is really um, I'm just wondering actually and this might need a little let me have a look. I've got more than one stays on. That one might need re-inking. This one, let's try it. And we can re-ink if we need to. They do dry out a bit. This, this one, this one's better. Can you see it's definitely better? So I'm just going to make sure this is inked up well. And I, I give it a little bit of a twist. Now, this is like a felt pad, which once upon a time we used to have felt style pads. These days, most of our ink pads are foam, but the stays on the waterproof ink is still, is still a felt pad. So you do need to treat it differently. I'm really, really going all over this and making sure that I get a good inking. And then I'm going to pop this down so that my um, my water is down right down here towards the bottom. And then give this a really good push. So we want to make sure that this comes out well. Did, I, did this come out perfect? No, but it doesn't matter. Okay, we just need it to be palm trees on a, on a fun watercolour background. So, so long as we've got the basis of it, that's all we need. There we go. The other thing is we can darken it up if we want to with um, either journaling pens or um, your blends. You can also make it darker, but that's not too bad. You can see the bit of detail there. Okay, so what we'll do now, this, like I said, this is waterproof, so we can add water to this and it's not going to go anywhere. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my water is coming through and I'm just going to do a rectangle of water. I'm just staying inside, like, like a little border, staying inside that edge. So I'm drawing a rectangle. And then I'm just going to add some water to the background here. But the most important thing is that, that I've got water with a bit of a border and like a rectangle all the way around. This might be hard to see. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, not really. Sorry, guys. In the light here, it's not going to really show. But I do want it to be quite wet. I'm going to squeeze a bit more water. I just don't think it's wet enough. That's better. That's better. All right, so I'm going to start with my lightest colour, which is the Coastal Cabana. And I can use either my medium tip or my fine tip. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I'm thinking I'm going to actually... You can squeeze it so it goes here and use this as a palette, but another alternative is to use your blocks. And then we're going to pick up, put a bit of water there, and pick this up. And we're going to add water to that line that we've just added there. If I go quiet while I'm doing this, I can't help it. It's because it gets my attention and I forget to talk. And that's not bad. All right, so I'm just going to add a bit of water to the center there. And I'm just letting it run and do its own thing. Now let me grab another, another block. And we're going to go to our granny apple green. And now every time you do this, it will totally turn out different. Okay. I'm going to clean that off just a little bit and then pick up my green, squeeze some water. So it becomes quite wet. And I'm adding it to that background, which is wet. Now it's getting a little bit dry. That's okay. Cause we can always add more water. Okay. 
So give it a squeeze. And I'm just going to kind of mix it up here. It's all kind of mishmashing around. And before I add any more colour, I kind of want to make sure that this is going to run. I want it to run into, you can pick it up and let it run. But for the purpose of something like this, it is nice to use a heat tool and push the colour around. So I'm grabbing my heat tool. Here we go. And I'm going to... I'm going to just push that water up a little bit and we're going to run it together with the other. And we're going to do the same thing and we're going to do a few layers of this. Water colouring to me needs to be just fun. Just play with it. There's no right or wrong. And that's pretty much dry. It doesn't take very long. So now I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to squeeze some water through again. And this time I'm really going to go to town and add lots and lots of water. Uh, I might go back to my coastal cabana. Drip some of this on here. And let's... So we want it to be nice and wet. And I don't know if you can see it starting to move around there. Can you see that moving? So let's push this with our heat tool. And notice how this, this stays on is um, resisting because it's waterproof. Now this is what I want it to do. Can you see we're starting to get like the pooling, the edges of the colour, pooling in different areas. That's exactly what we want. It's meant to look very haphazard when we're done. And it's looking really nice. Now I think we might need to um, add some more water and we're going to add a bit of that Bermuda Bay that I mentioned earlier. So... Add more water, and this time I'm going to grab, oh, I think I only need a little bit of this, so. so this is the pooling that I'm talking about. That's what I want, that kind of effect. Let's drip this on, and dark colour looks rather good doesn't it so. so we want that pooling of water extra here a bit more a bit more Bermuda Bay squeeze some water through okay that's looking good and now let's play with that and push that water around. I hope this is making sense what I'm doing. Okay, so is it is it um, neat and clean? No, it is not. And does it, you know, do you, can you control exactly where the colour goes? Not really. You can help it, but you can't really control it. So you're going to get this lovely pooling of water, the lines around the edges of some of the different elements. And this is starting to really look the way I want it to now. And you want to keep going until you get it relatively dry so you can work with it.
Okay. Can we see now it's starting to take on like you've got the colour sort of bleeding into different areas here, which I really, really like. And I like that this area over here is lighter. It could be like um, on the horizon, like some clouds or something going on over here. I do like that. If the if the actual... Um... No, it doesn't, Megan. It's really great. It, it's really good at holding lots and lots of water, Okay. Jenny, goodness me, poor Mike. Oh, yummy, Megan. Are they for Christmas lunch or something like that, the apricot balls? Is that what you're doing? We do need a mini Santa hat for the pelican. That's a great idea. <laughs> I'm just looking to see if anyone said anything while I was uh, busy doing that. Now, if you want to darken this up, there's a few things you can do. Um, you could use a blend. We have we have a, a black basic black marker and you could actually add a little bit here and make it really dark if you wanted to. But what worries me is it's almost too dark for the rest of it. Okay. So I still use my um my journaling pens. If you like those, you can actually add a little bit of you know feathering to some of the, the palm leaves if you want to and I hope you can see that I'm just going to do all three palms so they're all the same all right just to give you an idea of what this would look like so you could darken those up if you wanted to but it's not absolutely necessary I mean really oh I really do like the background that's lovely can you see how it's different every time but this one this one has more green. This one has more blue. You can keep going. You can go back and add more blue if you want to. Um, totally up to you how they end up looking. But I love see that you can see where the colour has pooled here with the water as it dried. And the same here with this one. You've got that lovely pooling. So there you go. Ah. I'm just looking to see what comments I am missing. It does look like a true watercolour paint, uh, painting and, you know, no one has to know. It's just you mucking around with, with water painters and, and ink and a, bit, and, uh, and a heat tool. <laughs> so nobody has to know. All right, so this is how this is together. I'm happy with that. Um, this is going to go here on my, on my piece. And I have got in my little collection of twine... I was just thinking, you know what other colour would look really nice in here would be Tahitian Tide. We could have done a little bit with that. Ooh, maybe next time I'll add some of that. That would look nice. But I'm just looking to see. I have got in my little collection here, I have some, some twine. And we have some twine which has uh the parakeet party in it and that's going to go rather nicely with this so if i just do a little i'm going to do a little bow with that because that nearly matches up with the granny apple green doesn't it and it's in such a small quantity you can't really tell that it's different so sometimes colors that are similar if you're using a small quantity of a color it can match quite well all right see that does actually go really nicely so let me move that out of the way and what we'll do here is we're going to pop some yeah cookie has been a bit um a bit talkative <laughs> you might have to make another batch of apricot balls before christmas megan well, wasn't that a nice little treat at on stage recently that we I actually got to meet some of the you, you girls who've been watching me for a while, um, and I just thought that was I thought that was lovely because um, we don't get that opportunity very often. So it was very nice. I got to meet Megan, um, and there was a couple of other girls that came up and said hello and said they've been watching on Friday and Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Sorry. All right. I also have here. Let me find it. Unless I've dropped it on the floor, and that's possible. We also have a 
I cut a circle just before we started, which is the circle here where I was going to put the Sunny Seasons greetings right there. But that seems to have run away. I can't see it on the floor. So instead, I have here, what have I got? Hmm, this might fit. We have a, um, a little banner here. I could use that. And let me clean off one of these blocks. And I'm going to use my Sunny Seasons Greetings because that's such a nice stamp from the stamp set. Sunny Seasons Greetings, there it is. It's actually probably, it's, I don't even know if I know if I've used all the other greetings. That's the one I've used almost on every single card because I like it so much. Well, sometimes we do that. Sometimes we pick a greeting that we really like and it ends up being the one, <laughs> the only one that sees ink. All right, so this is going to go down here just because I can't find the circle, but that still goes quite nicely. And I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of that. I know for sure, Joan, definitely a Linda moment. <laughs> I have them often. All right. And as soon as I as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to find that circle that I cut out because I did it specially just before I started. So let me quickly clean these off. I just clean the blocks on my um, on my stamp and scrub as if they were stamps, and they come up nice and clean. All right, what have we got? I've got a white card base. So I'm going to fold that in half. Now, with yesterday's um, craft along, um, I'll show you in a second um, the cards that we actually um, featured in in that yesterday. So I've already showed you the card that um, that we made live, but then all the other cards that are available. If you placed an order last month with me and you received a packet this month to make the project, you don't have to buy the tutorials. Okay, you're going to get them for free. They'll be in your mailbox. I should have them finished tomorrow. That is my aim. Um, in fact, I'm sure I will have them done tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, so yep, yeah, the plan is that um, they should be in your inbox by tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening. Um, and if you're in my team, you also get them just because you're in the team and because I love having you guys in my team. I have something to show you tonight. I can't wait to show it to you. It arrived today. When, um, when mail um, comes, it doesn't normally come here on a Sunday, and most people would be familiar with the fact that we don't normally get Sunday mail. But um, at Christmas time, anything's possible, and we had Sunday delivery today, so um, which I was very, very surprised to see. There you go. I'm just going to pop that there like that. And we need some bling. Is Jody here? That <laughs> makes me unique. Oh, I'm certainly unique, that's for sure. We all know this. All right, so what have I got in the way of bling? I've got, oh, I've got these nice little guys. They would look rather good, don't you think? Let's do those tonight. Um, these are the sequins. Are these in the, are these in the mini or are these in the annual? I'm trying to remember where they are. Let me have a quick look. Oh, uh, yeah, they're here. These adhesive back sequins and gems, and I'm using the. They're on page 19. Let's have a quick look. There they are, and they are in what color? Coastal Cabana, Fresh Freesia, and Iridescent, just Iridescent. So um, that means these are a perfect match because we are working with Coastal Cabana tonight. So let's use my scissors to pop these on. Or you could use your takey pick tool if you love your takey take pick tool. Uh, let's, let's see, where would I like this to go? Um, I'm going to have one down here. And I'm going to have one over here. And I think one up the top. And Jodie would be very happy. I don't know, Jodie, are you watching? <laughs> because we couldn't not have bling. Actually, that's not the right place for that. Uh, let me see. I think here. There we go. Like that. That's better. There we go. We have some Coastal Cabana bling, which is just perfect on there. What do we think? Do we like that? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Is this the one you're thinking of or which one? Which one? Oh, Mike has not mom pneumonia. That's not good. Yeah, we hope he gets better. <laughs> 
Yeah, thinking of you is a good sentiment and I never get tired of it because it goes with, you know, it's good for all kinds of occasions. It's good for a get well sentiment. It's good for when someone's going through a tough time. It's just, it's just really good and I use it quite a bit. Thinking of you is just a good all-round easy sentiment to use. All right, let's pop these couple of things away and then I'm going to show you some new stuff because we love new stuff, right? All right. Now, ah, here's something else to, show, to share with you. I have just cleaned off this stamp and you can see it's lovely and clean. And I've just cleaned this one on my stamp and scrub as well. And as you can see, it is not really clean. And that's because we use stays on. And stays on, guess what? Guess what stays on does, guys? <laughs> it stays on. Um, hence the name. So you can you could call this clean because nothing's going to come off. It's actually it's actually clean in that you could stamp with it again with a different colour or whatever. And if that doesn't worry you you could put it away like that but if you want to get rid of the black and you don't actually like it we do have something called stays on all-purpose cleaner okay now this is specifically to get um to get stays on off your stamps because it stains them um and this will actually remove that so i can i can run my stays on cleaner all over and it's a solvent clean cleaner and I don't like to use stays on on my photopolymer stamps okay if I can help it because I don't like to use stays on cleaner on them it's very hard on them and I think um, if you don't want if you want your um, photopolymer stamps or acrylic stamps to last over a period of time then you will want to um, you'll want to try and avoid the stays on cleaner on those if possible can you see that has now got off the black and we've got a lovely clean stamp again yeah it stains it like red ink exactly jenny but if you want to get it off you can use your stays on cleaner to get it off but i'm really comfortable using stays on cleaner on rubber but not so comfortable using it on photopolymer so i avoid where possible i avoid using photopolymer um, with with stays on for that reason um can I just say I have a preference for rubber stamps if I had to choose I would choose and you know what in the new catalog they're letting us choose they're actually um they're actually giving us a choice of rubber or clean <laughs> I hope that doesn't confuse too many people but you'll have a choice personally I would choose rubber every time because I think for two reasons one I can use stays on with it without having to worry and um, actually three reasons Two, I can also use um, my stamp and write markers on rubber, and it does a much better job than it does if you try and use stamp and write markers on photopolymer. It doesn't work as well. Um, but the other reason I like is because you can get a level of detail with rubber stamps that you can't get with photopolymer. Now they they are getting better at that, um, but. I much prefer, if I had a choice, I would choose rubber because it's more versatile. Um, I don't, the only thing I love about the acrylic ones, of course, is that you can see through them and they're much easier to use if you're doing like two-step stamping or something like that. So that is a bonus. But um, for everything else, unless it's a two-step stamp set, I would choose rubber. So that's just, that's just a personal thing. Um, they make both because some people prefer the photopolymer and it is nice to see where you're going. So I totally get that. I get it. All right. I've got something fun to show you now and probably some of you know what it is. You can guess. What am I going to show you? I've got a few people saying, yes, oh, you have a, a latex allergy, do you, Jenny? I've, um, I know of somebody else who has that. Um, and yes, latex, there is latex, uh, latex based to the Tombow. Tombow has latex. That is correct. Yeah. Um, so there we go. Yeah, it is like a roller thing. Um, mine is really dirty. So this is not, when it comes, it's lovely and clean. It's, this is white, but mine is black because of all the cleaning it's done. It's not, it's actually not a roller. It's like a little felt, um, a felt tip and it's got a sponge in there. But, um, yeah, it's like a felt over a sponge kind of thing. Or, yeah, if you get it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
Yes, that's right, Donna. You are correct. Anita is correct. That's right. I got it today and I'm a bit excited. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I've opened the box and that's as far as I got because I thought it'd be fun to show you together. So let me let me put my box up here. All right, I'm going to move this back so that you, you'll you be able to see my messy desk, but that's okay. I've been busy today and I was going to try and clean it up. I try and clean up as much as I can before I go live, but um, but tonight I just went, you know what, I'm so busy. It's just going to have to be how it is. It's more done is better than perfect, right? And, you know, good enough is good enough. I've just got to remember that, that I don't have to be perfect. And I think that's a big thing because a lot of people think you do have to be perfect. And I'm sorry if you're looking for perfection, you've come to the wrong place. That is not me. <laughs> Super exciting. Yours is on the way. Well, mine was on the way too. And um, so there we go. Oh, that's not good, Jenny. That's not good. I'm sorry to hear that. All right. So um, first of all, important things. Uh, this is in every, this This will be whether you get the boho blue mini or whether you get the white normal mini, okay, you will get a little package like this with the quick start guide, the um, the embossing folder insert, um, and then also this is for, well, we've got two. We've actually, these are both for embossing folders, um, but for different, this one's with 3D embossing folders and this is with standard embossing folders. You've got two clear plates. And you've got your base platform, which is much, much thinner than the one that you get with a big um, machine. But, hey, this is a mini machine. It's a different thing, right? So those are in the top. And who wants to see the colour? Look, isn't it pretty? <laughs> oh, I've been looking forward to getting this. All right, so this is, if you're thinking, what colour is that? This colour is called Boho Blue, and they have told us this is a sneak peek at one of the new ink colours that is coming in our new ink colour range when the new catalogue comes out in May. So we are going to see all of those colours up close and personal be between now and then, but this is one of the colours, so it's like a little sneak peek. Isn't that fun? Hey there, Jody. Nice to see you. Yep, Jody's here. Hooray. Don't lose the plates. I won't, Ellen. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, that's uh, something that none of us want to do. I know you, you would never do anything like that. <laughs> All right. So this operates exactly the same as the white mini, but it's a blue one. It's the only difference. Okay, there it is. And it's really light and portable. And that's the advantage of a mini, okay. There are some things, I mean, I use my my big size cut and emboss machine when I'm doing classes and things like that. But this little guy is super, super um, convenient if you want to go away and you want to take something light and easy with you or if I'm going to classes or, um, you know, it's there also on the desk when I do a um a project with you guys it's much easier to pull out the mini than it is to do use the big one now you would never lose your plate cell and i know you would not you love the color i know me too Naomi. look at that isn't that fun <laughs> so how do you get one of these all right this is going to be a joining special next month january 5th you'll be able to get one of these um if you're a demonstrator you can get one now and that's how I got mine. I just bought it. They're $110 to buy, um, which is the same price as the white mini. Um, but you can order a blue one with a different code. It has a different item number than the white one. Okay. Um, <sighs> a big one in a new color release. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Well, this is something that they're offering special. Um, so this is part of our celebration offering. So let me tell you about it really quickly. There are three options to join in January, and I think this is possibly one of the best specials we've ever had. Um, the first option is to pay the normal kit price, which is $169. Normally you get $235 worth of product of your choice. You can choose anything you like. There's no set kit, but you can get $235 worth of products for only $169 with free shipping. That's the normal thing. However, in January, if you spend $169, you will get $315 worth of products for free. So that's for $169, you get $315 worth of products for free. That's cool, right? Then option two is instead of $169, spend $210, okay? And so another, what, $41? Am I right? I think my math is right. Another $41 and you're going to get 
$315 worth of product and a white mini cut and emboss machine. Okay, you can choose the normal white one if that's the one you want. Or option three, and this is where this one comes in, option three is $210, you'll get $315 worth of products and the Boho Blue Mini. Okay, so those are the three options and I love that they're giving us options because there'll be people out there who think to themselves, I don't need a mini, I don't want one. But you can't. You don't have to choose a mini if you don't want it. If you've already got one and you don't want another one, um, then you don't have to. You can just go with the 169 and get $315 worth of products. It's such a good deal, okay? If you have any questions at all, please reach out. I'm happy to send you information or answer any questions that you might have. Um, for me, Stampin' Up! has been an absolutely amazing journey. I just love, love, love this company and I love working with them and I love everything about them. I think it's just a really great place to be. If that sounds like you or if you're a customer who puts through regular orders, you could probably be getting a discount on those orders by being a demonstrator. Okay, so there are choices. You can just become what we call a happy shopper, like a VIP customer who gets extra perks for being a demonstrator or you might decide you want to do a bit more. You might want to, you know, earn money for the, I don't know, the kids' soccer class, soccer lessons or, um, you know, piano lessons or something. There might be something that you want to pay for or to have a little bit of something just for you, something for yourself. And if you want to run some classes, you can, okay? So you can either go just as a happy shopper or you can go all the way up to actually running a bit more of a, um, of a, a community where you are actually doing classes and so forth. You might find you love that. A lot of people do. So, um... <laughs> oh, Jenny, that's rude. We don't. Ellen would never do that. That's not nice. Yes, it's a mini cut and emboss machine. No, that's it's absolutely. So it's like a little baby one. We have a white one normally, but um, this is this is the blue version, and this is just for. It's only going to be available. This month for demonstrators and then January and February for customers when they join Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator. Okay, that's the only way to get one. For for demonstrators who want one, I don't think demonstrators can even get it after the, um, after the 4th of January. I think you have to get it now. That's my understanding. If anyone wants to correct me. Isn't it pretty? So this is a new in colour. This is going to be one of the five new colours that's coming our way. It's called Boho Blue. And I would call this a medium blue. What do you think? It's kind of like, it's darker than soft sea spray. Does anyone remember that color? Was it soft sea spray? I think it was. Did I get it right? Um, but that was kind of like a very muted color. And Baja Breeze was very muted. Do you remember those? Um, this is a darker medium sort of a color. But it's not a denim blue, not like Misty Moonlight was. Um, so, yeah, I just really like it. I think it's really fun. So there you go. I wanted to show you that tonight. Who, who would like to see some other new things? Got some other new things to play? Soft sea foam. No, no, that's a green, Jenny. I'm picking one that was something sea spray. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me see this. Ah, well, you know what? Um, anyone can join, actually, um, Donna, and even people who think they would never be able to reach the target. Sometimes people do, they do what we call kidnapping. They join and they stay for a little while and then they go. And that's actually allowed. It's, um, I like to, when I ask, when people come to me and say they'd like to join or I ask someone to join, I suggest they give it a go for 12 months. Okay, and if they think they could manage it for 12 months, I've got customers who are spending more than the quotas every single quarter just on their own product. Um, they absolutely could be getting a discount. And could they go for 12 months? I would think so. I would think that that's a great thing. So give it a go for 12 months, see how you go. And you might love it. Seaside spray, that's what it was. Thanks, guys. Demos can only get it in December. That's correct, Megan. So if you love it, you need to get it now okay otherwise you won't be you won't be able to get it next month um so yeah there you go megan's just saying it donna <laughs> thought the same thing i'm a hobby demo just for myself and i make targets each quarter yeah it, you can actually do it by shopping every month and then or you can do it all in one hit so some people do it different ways but if you want to talk about it ask me questions about it i'm absolutely no pressure i'm absolutely happy to answer any questions that you might have 
So, um, so there you go. All right. Let's look at a couple of other things. I have a couple more things that came in the box this week that I want to show you. Um, and some of these, um, first of all, I have to show you this one. <laughs> Guess why? Is anyone surprised that I bought this set? I don't think so. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to get these cats to be black and white. I think I, I think I know how I can. I need a black and white one and I need an orange one or a ginger one because they're the two cats that we have. So I don't think anyone, has anyone else had COVID more than once? Um, my son's had it four times, Jenny, <laughs> four times. I've had it once. My daughter's had it twice. Uh, my husband hasn't had it at all. It's really random. So there you go. And, yeah, we have a few hobby demos here, like Joan's saying she's a, she's a, um, oh, that's a shame, Kelly. Um, you can reach out to Stampin' Up if you haven't done so already. Um, you can reach out to them and see if they can keep you on a little longer. You can do that. Ah, yes. <laughs> see, no one's surprised, Megan. No one's surprised. Yeah, he's very greedy. Um, this is another set I really wanted because I think it's really beautiful and I have an idea of what I want to do with this. So I will do that one set, uh, Sunday night or Friday night and show you some fun things with that. And then I've got some DSP to show you. So I thought this would be really this, – this DSP is called By the Bay and is absolutely beautiful. As, as you can see, it's six by six and it is specialty paper. And any time I see the word specialty – I tell people, um, especially if they're demonstrators and they're wondering what colours, you know, what paper should I get? If it says specialty, you need to get it. And the reason why is because there's something special about it that you cannot see in a catalogue, okay? I mean, one side of this has like, um, it's just a plain, I mean, if you call that plain, isn't that beautiful? Okay. The other side has a foil embossed kind of a design to it. Isn't that lovely? Can you see it's kind of iridescent? Isn't that lovely? Really, really nice. So let's have a look at these. We've got some shells on this side and there's four sheets of each, okay, in the six by six. So 48 sheets all together. Um, this one, really, really pretty with the gold foil there. We have some little, um, what are these birds called? I'm trying to think there's actually of the name of the bird. I cannot remember, but if someone wants to help me out, I don't remember what they're called, but they're fun little birdies. And there's little crabs on there as well. And the other side, I like this one. Look at that. Look at those fishies. Isn't that nice? I think that's gorgeous. Love, love, love. And then we have this. This reminds me. Remember the um, on the, hor the Horizon papers we had last year where we had sort of like little bits of watercolour-y kind of looking? You could do lots with this. Um, in fact, I have a nice idea of something I want to do with it. In fact, maybe I'll do it tonight. We'll see. I had another idea of something else, but I've just, I'm going to pull that out because I think I might be going to use it. This side, we have that iridescent embossing again on a blue, navy blue background. Little shells or mussels, actually. These are mussels. Piper. That's what these are. Did anyone say that to me? Um, those little birdies, they're pipers, I think sandpipers and like little waves iridescent waves on a blue background as well night navy i believe it's another oh look at that wouldn't that be beautiful see this one i'm gonna pull that one aside as well what's on the back oh love that how beautiful is that it's like iridescent stripes on that just gorgeous it does look like a hologram. I know the paper is beautiful. Just gorgeous. Love, love. Love that. And this one is like, uh, looks, reminds me of like, um, like a beach shack. That's what this reminds me of. And on the back we have some shells and crabs, mussels, little pearls there. And you've got some gold swirls. Tell me this paper is not beautiful. I think this is stunning. I thought we had more fishies, but on a different color background this time. These ones are on a green background with some swirls. Very, very nice. And this side, we just have some beautiful green and blue stripes. 
it reminds me what's that shop there's a shop up at um erin affair which is my local shopping center where they just have all beachy stuff and i've forgotten what the shop is called but it's it's just all beach you know lots and lots of white furniture and frames and and beachy things and it reminds me of that you know they have surfboards hanging around the place little sandpipers again some fun little shells and crabs and this is beautiful swirly swishy paper sea and sand shop thank you nairi that's it that's the one how good is this paper this would be lovely this is really nice just like waves fun and that's starry sky and night of navy together i believe and then here we have some beautiful gold kind of a, almost like a shell design beautiful Oop, this one and then this one on one side kind of just like a, a bit of a watercolory kind of a design and on the back we've got some mussels but they've got that iridescent that iridescent embossing on them again oh, it's just starting to rain again here and see this is beautiful look at those even both that the sides with the embossing are nice but so are the reverse sides now there's meant to be four of each but i think there's given me an extra i might have a bonus sheet because there's five there <laughs> good and this is the other side with that iridescent embossing on it again and that's beautiful as well aren't these lovely they're so nice really really love them all right so i'm going to come back to a couple of these but that paper I had to have it it's just so gorgeous um other things that i've also got i've got two free celebration items here this is some paper from the celebration so this is free with a 90 dollars order and i got this one it does match a stamp set that's in the mini but it's really really nice on its own um and i do plan on doing some fun things with this if you like purple you're gonna love this paper because it's got quite a bit of purple in it and mossy meadow you see that seaweed and sand it's very nice isn't it solvega i can imagine that's something you would like more purple and so we've got these like little geometrical geometric designs on the other side can you see that so we've got some rectangles on this one and then some little geometric kind of shapes on that one there's a mixture of purple and calypso coral and petal pink in that one petal pink geometrics on this side and they go really nicely together the other color that's featured in here is fresh freesia um, so you can see on this side it's on a black background so it's quite dramatic but um, when you look at the back of it you've got your fresh freesia little shapes there as well i know isn't that gorgeous it's just beautiful i know right i'm gonna to have to put an extra blanket on the bed on the weekend we actually removed a blanket off the bed thinking we wouldn't need it and i'm thinking i'm gonna go out and go back to the cupboard and get the blanket out again it's silly all right so this is like a black background with calypso coral how nice all right i'm gonna make a super fast card i do have one more lot of paper to show you um and it's this one which is a celebration paper that one i just showed you a moment ago is a level one so free with a 90 dollars order this one is like the gingham paper i was talking about before it's 48 sheets of 12 by 12 paper so it's a lot in here and this is free with a 180 dollars order okay so this is like a double level two one and there are four sheets of each i believe see so stars flowers and i'm not going to go in depth through the whole thing but you can see these are fantastic for backgrounds good for scrapbooking for those of you who are scrapbookers lots of small designs which is really, really nice when you want to, you know, just have something in the background, not make it an overwhelming feature. You want it to sit nicely in the background. These are really, really nice. Can you see how nice they are? And the colours, there's a lot of great colours in here. I like this one. That's really nice. The blue and white dots are gorgeous. That's balmy blue. And there's Coastal Cabana in here and Pool Party as well. So really, really good mishmash of colours that's coastal cabana it's, i don't know if you can see it's got like little hexagons can you see the hexagons hey Bromen, nice to see you and here we go these little dotty ones here and some lovely greens so the colors in here there's a lot of colors 
Um, Balmy Blue, Calypso Coral, Coastal Cabana, Fresh Freesia, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody and Petal Pink. Really nice, okay? And you'll definitely see me using those quite a bit. But I'm going to do a super fast card right now. I, I think I'll go with this one, um, even though I like both of them. But I'm going to go with this one. And I'm going to grab this paper. It tells me that it has Night of Navy. It doesn't say Starry Sky, but I think some of it in there looks a bit like Starry Sky. But anyway, let's go and grab myself a Night of Navy piece. And we'll make this a quick one because I have to go at 9 o'clock. I have to be at the station to pick up my daughter. So that means I don't have very long. So let's let's make a card and make it fast. So I'm cutting my card front to be 10 centimetres by 14.3. And I'm going to cut this piece here to be I'm deciding, uh, 7 centimeters wide and I'm going to use the other side let me see how much I need here and I'm going to do an inch it might be too much but we can always cut it down so that's about two and a half centimeters and let's see if that's the right size or if I need to cut it down oh, I can get away with that that's okay right so let's Let's pop this in. I should have cut the lengthways before. But I'm going to make it 13.8, uh, which is half a centimetre smaller than the, maybe the piece at the back. And so I'm using this lovely iridescent stripe as my side, my little piece on the side. And I am going to cut a tiny bit off that. I'm using one of my favourite, um, my favourite card designs, card sketches. It's one I use a lot, and that's going to fit better in there. Okay, so let's use our seal. I don't have the stamp set yet that matches this. I would like to get it, but it's not. It wasn't high enough on my list to get it at the first viewing, but the paper was. I just thought the paper was so beautiful. I was happy to grab that first and I'll get the rest later and then I'm putting this piece from the back I'm going to pop that down here on the side it just makes it a little bit more interesting to use both sides of the paper all right how's that looking okay so now I'm going to my punch drawer and some of you may know what I'm going to get I've got my I've got my little is it yacht punch what is this called what is this punch called? Let's have a look in our catalogue here. It's called the Sailboat Builder. Okay, it's $34 on page 151. Um, and I think it goes really nicely with this. So I'm deciding what colour I want to have. I think um, I think I'll grab some crumb cake maybe. And I think the... I think the basis because there's crumb cake in this here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab some crumb cake for the base here, and then I'll have some other colors. I think I want to have hmm, deciding. Maybe we could do white for the sale for one of the sales, or we could do the other thing we could do, which would be really interesting, would be. Um, vellum we could have vellum for a sale it's not like me to want to put vellum on a card is it but i don't have any vellum really close by so i'm just going to start with um let's see so if we had a white one like this and what color should we have at the back i don't want to have i don't want red i don't want it to be too dark maybe balmy blue maybe that would keep it in the blues and I have balmy blue close by because I used it earlier for another card let me see what do you think do we think balmy blue I know right <laughs> vellum and I are good friends we love vellum 
Oh, Love Actually is a great movie, Cheryl, for Christmas. One of my favourites. So I've got a bit of Barney Blue here. Let's try that. And then we can work out whether we want to have a different colour or whether we're happy with this. So if I had my boat here and I'm thinking one like this and one like this. Let's do it on the blue so you can see it better. Like this. What do we think? Do we like that? <laughs> Just for something fun. I mean, it's a fun little, it's a fun little punch. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, so it's going to be over this side here. And I'm going to just pop. Mm, I should be using my silicon mat. That's what I should be using. It's very naughty of me not using it. I just put that on the wrong side. Oh well. <laughs> We're going the other way because I'm silly. That's okay. So I'm thinking these pieces will go like uh, like this. Do we like it like that? Try red just to see. Oh, that's a good idea, Ellen. You're doing stamping right now. Sometimes I wonder how many people are, are stamping and crafting, not necessarily doing, you know, not doing it with me, but just um, using, you know, doing something of their own and kind of keeping an eye on what I'm doing as well because it is fun to craft with somebody else. That's why we do craft-alongs, right? All right. I didn't finish showing you all the other creations from yesterday either i was going to do that then i got carried away talking about the new mini and i'm going to pop this behind here a couple more minis mini dimensionals so much to talk about right now there's just so much going on i'm excited <laughs> you could make the sales out of vellum and that's what I was saying earlier that normally I would, but I didn't have the vellum handy. So, right. So that's just going to go like that. And then we can add a sentiment to this, put the whole thing on a white card base. Have I got a white card base handy? I'm pretty sure I do. There I go. But isn't that paper just beautiful? I mean, what a simple thing to do. Add a little boat to the beautiful paper and it almost, and a sentiment. And I'll add a sentiment to this probably probably later and I'll post it so you guys get to see it um, a little later. It'll be up on my it'll be up on my um, Instagram page or my Facebook page. Alright, so for those of you who are waiting anxiously for me to post my tutorials from yesterday's craft along, um, I just wanted to say I will have that ready for by tomorrow and it will be up on my blog when it's ready. Okay, so the whole point of it is so that um, so that you guys can purchase those. And I have done a special this month. Um, instead of the normal twenty dollars for the tutorial this month, I'm doing them for twelve dollars. Okay, there are six different, um, actually seven if you count the one we did yesterday, but six new alternate designs. Um, and there are tutorials for all of them and all the measurements as well. Okay, so. It's a special. Now that's 12 Australian dollars. Hey there, Michelle. <laughs> that's a great idea. That's a good thing to do while you watch. Um, so this is the one we did yesterday. Let me just move this out of the way. And then I've got, we've got different ones. We have this one here. We have this little guy here. These are all gift card holders. So we have this one here that opens up and you've got your gift card that goes in here. You have a little gift card holder here that has the little tag as well. Um, this little guy has, when you open this up, there's a little space inside here for your gift card or a little note as well if you want to have it. Uh, what else? Which one am I missing? I'm missing something. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, and we're six. Where is it? I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> there's another one. Um, but anyway. 
it's here somewhere. Oh, I know. I know where it is. This is the other one. This little guy. Okay, so this has got the pop-up gift, hold, gift card holder. And those of you who are in my team will remember um, that we did a similar idea to this one um, some time ago as a team event, at a team event that we did. So um, so there you go. That's the, that's the sixth one that's in there. I was thinking, I know there's another one, but where is it? <laughs> and the tutorials for all of these, they're video tutorials plus uh, PDFs with, um, with all the measurements for you. Okay. There you go. There's the cards we've done tonight. We've done this one, and wherever it is, we've done the the watercolor one with the with the palm trees, which is somewhere somewhere. On, oh, here it is. It's underneath my trimmer. Here it is. There we go. They're the two cards we did tonight. I'll add a sentiment to this one, and I'll post both of those. But something really fun, and I hope you enjoyed them. I know the the pop up is great, isn't it? It's such a nice it's such a nice card. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm off to go get my girl, but I hope that you all have a fantastic week ahead. For those of you that are in my team, you can look forward to the tutorials arriving in your inbox. Um, and for anyone who placed orders last month, you'll also get those tutorials. I'll start posting all the pictures of the different um, gift card holders over the next few days and you'll see more of those. Um, but... Um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys again next Friday night. And if you're in the team, don't forget, I'll be live with you tomorrow morning. Have a great week, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.